Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Monica and I am the founder and creator of Gerasol Vintage. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how I transformed this vintage bentwood rocking chair. I saved it from the landfill and I want to be able to sell it at my booth at the Newburgh Vintage Emporium in New York. I got this rocking chair from Facebook Marketplace for $20. Whenever I see chairs with cane webbing in good condition, I pick them up because this style sells well in my area. We're going to go ahead and start off by removing the back of the chair and the seat. This chair had really old hardware and screws so I ended up just tossing them and I kept one just to be able to go back to the store and buy new ones. Once I was done removing the back and the seat I set it aside because I'm going to start working on the frame. I used some TSP and a rack to clean the entire frame of the chair. You want to make sure you're doing this it's just so that you can have a clean um, surface when you're doing repairs and when you are painting. I let my piece dry for a little bit and then I went in with a medium sandpaper just to give it a quick scuff. Um, I am going to be using a new type of paint and this paint does require that you do a scuff sanding on your pieces, especially if they are shiny. Once I was done scuff sanding my piece, I went again with a little bit of water in my rag just to remove any of the dust that was created by the sanding. After sanding my chair and cleaning it twice, I did realize that um, it has some pretty big gouges in the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and use some Bondo to repair this. If you guys haven't checked out my last video, I actually go more in, in depth as to how to use Bondo to repair wood. If you guys want to go ahead and click on that video if you don't know how to use this product, I will go ahead and link it down below for you guys so you guys don't have to go crazy trying to find it. After I let the bondo sit on the rocker for about 30 minutes, I went back with my sander and I know you can see it here but um, to the touch is actually really smooth and it's, it's basically as if there's, there wasn't uh, any repair there. For this transformation, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint in the color Anchor. Or black as always I'm gonna be honest with you about this paint and I will give you my true opinion about the paint so far none of the paint companies have reached out to me um, to sponsor any of my videos so I have full freedom to speak about every single paint I try for my transformations um, granted I am NOT a professional regarding paint formulation so I am only speaking from a customer furniture artist perspective I bought this paint from my local retailer and they clearly stated that they did not like the formulation um, for this paint. Before using this product, I went on Dixie Bell's website and I read their instructions. One of the things that stood out to me is that they do not recommend to add water or to water down the paint unless you are using a sprayer. In my case, I wanted to try both. So the first coat on my chair I did with a brush and the second coat I actually sprayed. And it's not on video, 
but you guys have seen me spray other um, pieces. So based on my experience, I do not recommend this paint for dry brushing or uh, blending unless you're a blending goddess like Kacha or Brandy. I just it's just not something that would work out for me. The paint performed well and it passed the scratch test, it sprayed beautifully. However, I am by nature a very frugal person and I do believe that the price point for this paint is a bit high. Um, for people who are in the business of refinishing furniture, this could be pretty costly at the end of the day. I do like that this paint offers a built-in primer and a top coat, especially if you're only going to do one project or if you're just DIYing something at home and it's again, it's just a one-time thing uh, because ultimately you are paying $24.99 for 16 ounces of paint. That does not include your shipping or your tax. So just something to be aware of. So once I was done with the frame of the chair, I went ahead and started taping the back and the seat. I wanted to do that because I want to make sure I don't get any paint into the cane webbing and I did it on both sides. So I went ahead and added three full coats of poly to this chair. As you guys know, I do like to spray my top coat better than brushing it. It's just faster, easier, and you're almost guaranteed to have a nice and smooth um, surface. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just poking some holes through a cardboard box and this is just so that I can stick my screws in there so I can spray paint them without getting any paint on the rest of the screw, just the top. as always any products that I use for this transformation are gonna be listed down in the description box below so don't forget to go there and check out all the products that I'm using a 
Now here is when I started having a freak out because I had been working on this chair on and off for two weeks and the chair did not want to go back together. It just didn't want to. So I freaked out but thankfully my husband uh, was there to save the day and he actually helped me put it back together. Okay you guys, so this is it. This is the final step into the transformation of this beautiful, beautiful 1960s bent wood chair. But before I show you the final result, let's go ahead and take a look at what the chair looked like before. trying to film <laughs> sorry guys okay so anyway if you guys enjoy my videos please don't forget to comment down below give me a thumbs up or just uh, in general continue interacting with my videos because it truly is the best way for me to continue growing I hope you guys enjoy the final result and I'll see you guys next week bye bye